Jazz standards are the songs that you need if you want to learn to play jazz. They are the songs that you play where you're putting everything that you practice to use. Whether it's chord voicings, arpeggios, bebop licks, scales or music theory, those are the songs where you really get it into your playing, where you start making music with it. And frankly, I think it's also the most fun part of learning how to play jazz playing some real music. This video is a list of 50 jazz standards so you can start developing your own repertoire and just check them out one by one. I'm gonna go over them in different categories because I think it's important that you don't play the same type of song all the time. You don't want to have a set where you're playing five tunes in the same medium swing in F major right after each other. You want to keep it interesting and not boring for both the band and the audience. After the 50 standards I'm also gonna go over a short list of some of my favorite tunes that are a little bit less common so you can also check those out at the end of the video. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. I know I've covered these easy jazz standards in another video, but I think it's super important that you start working on learning some songs right away when you start learning jazz. And it's also very important that you don't take a song that's too difficult and then crash the whole thing by just getting stuck with that. Can you spend three months learning Stella by Starlight as the first standard that you ever learned to play? I guess I did spend three months learning how to play Stella by Starlight. But with all my lessons, I think it's important that you have to remember you should do as I say, you shouldn't do as I do. The reason why I can be considered an expert in some of these things is that I've made pretty much all the mistakes, so I can tell you how not to do that. Good songs to start with would be songs like Autumn Leaves, Pent Up House, Blue Bossa, Lady Bird, Take the A-Train, Perdido, Satin Doll, Cantaloupe Island, All of Me and Summertime. And just because a song is easy or simple doesn't mean that you can't do great things with it. Just listen to Joe Henderson playing Take the A-Train or Pat Metheny playing Cantaloupe Island or even Joe Pass playing Satin Doll. These songs are a little bit more difficult to play, they're a little bit more complicated, but they're also very common. So you're probably gonna run into them at jam sessions or if you do gigs where you're just calling standards. And there are songs like There'll Never Be Another You, There's No Greater Love, It Could Happen To You, Have You Met Miss Jones, All The Things You Are, How High The Moon, Just Friends, and Out Of Nowhere. As you can maybe tell from the list, I'm also taking a little bit care to have different keys in there. I think that's actually more important than we sometimes think about. We don't want to play the same key all the time. If you want to hear that, then just listen to an ACDC live album where pretty much everything is in the key of A. So a true story about that. Uh, when I was studying a million years ago, I was doing a gig with a singer. It was in a noisy cafe and we were playing for three sets, so it was pretty long. In the third set, uh, we started off by playing Embraceable You. That was a medium swing tune in the key of E flat. Then we went to I Remember You. That was a medium swing tune and we were playing it in the key of E flat. So at the end of the solos, the singer comes in with the last theme and she managed to modulate back to Embraceable You. So we ended up having to suddenly go to another tune. And this has to do with concentration, of course, because it's difficult to keep concentration if you're in a noisy environment and you're playing a long gig. At the same time, if the band has trouble keeping track of what song is being played, then it's not gonna be easier for the audience. Of course, there are a lot of difficult jazz songs that you can check out. The three I'm gonna mention here are just because I think they're important to know. They're difficult for different reasons, but they're also quite common. So the first one is Stella by Starlight, and then Cherokee, and finally Giant Steps. So they're difficult for different reasons, but you do want to have them in your repertoire eventually. They just shouldn't be among the first 10 tunes that you're checking out. A great way to change the pace in a set is to also have some ballads in there. And some very common ballads would be polka dots and moonbeams, body and soul, or in a sentimental mood. You can also use a ballad if you're playing with a band to just have a small part of a set that's also solo guitar. Of course, this depends a little bit on where you're playing, because if you're playing in a very noisy venue, like a cafe or something like that, where people are talking a lot, then maybe the ballads don't work at all. But maybe that's just in the Netherlands. If you play guitar, you really have to check out some Brazilian music. It's a tradition that's really developed on guitar and it has influenced jazz and became a part of the jazz repertoire. There are some great songs in there and they tend to be a little bit like complicated or more interesting modern sounding standards. So I'm talking about pieces like The Girl from Ipanema, Corcovado, One Note Samba, Triste and Sudanso Samba.
Besides all the authentic sambas and bossa novas, then there's also a whole range of grooves that are sort of jazz versions of this. They're not really Latin grooves, they're just jazz Latin grooves. And this is something that's very common in the hard pop era. And some of the songs that you play in these grooves also tend to be very often a little bit modal. So I'm talking about songs that have one chord for a longer period of time. Uh, stuff like I Remember April by Corda May, Green Dolphin Street, Night and Day or Love for Sale. The blues is a huge part of jazz, I'm sure you already know this, but it's important to remember that there are also a lot of very important compositions on the 12 bar blues. So I'm talking about songs like Billy's Bounce, Au Privave, Turnaround, Tenor Madness, Straight No Chaser and Mr. PC. And it is also a little bit as if each period of jazz, so whether you have bebop, hard bop, modal jazz or even more modern styles, they all have their own take on how to write a 12 bar blues. Jazz isn't only in 4-4, so it's important to also have a part of your repertoire that are in other meters. And I think the waltzes are a great place to start, uh, so just a basic 3-4. But later you also want to play other meters like 6-8, 5-4 and 7-4. And you also want to be able to take standards that are usually in 4-4 and then move them to those meters. So some of the common 3-4 tunes that you want to check out would be stuff like Blue Set, Someday My Prince Will Come or Footprints. And you can see here also that this is overlapping with the blues because two of these are in fact based on the 12 bar blues, even though they're also very, very different compositions where one is pretty bebop, it's almost like a Parker blues and the other one is more of a modal composition. A thing that's a little bit overlooked when it comes to creating some variation in a set is also that we forget that there's a huge difference between a song that's in a major key and a song that's in a minor key. So you want to have some minor key songs as well, even though there are not as many of them. Great songs to check out and that are also pretty common would be Softly as in the Morning Sunrise, Yesterdays, Alone Together or Solar. And again, we have a take on a 12 bar blues because Solar is in fact a take on a 12 bar minor blues. And of course, we also need some bebop pieces. And I only have three spots left on my list of 50 standards. So here I'm going with Scrabble from the Apple, Anthropology and Oleo. So I'm really focusing on some bebop pieces on some common forms like Honeysuckle Rose, which is Scrabble from the Apple and then two rhythm changes. And that's because those forms are really important to know. And there are a lot of other bebop themes that are also on that form. Of course, I also covered some bebop themes when I was talking about the blues because a lot of bebop themes are written on a 12 bar blues. I'm very curious what you think about this list. Did I leave out your favorite song? And which one is that? Then leave a comment. And of course, if you know a great version of one of these songs, then share that in the comments as well because it's always good to have some really great recorded versions of these songs. As I said in the beginning of this video, there are also a few songs that I really love to play that are not common enough to make it to this list. Uh, but I just want to mention those just because those are songs I really like. And uh, one of them would be I'll Be Seeing You, which is a great old fashioned standard uh, that I learned from uh, Chris Cheek, actually, where he's, he's playing it on his debut album with uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel on guitar. Another song that I really love to play is Very Early, which is a Bill Evans tune. It's a waltz. And it's, it's a little bit complicated, but it's also well worth checking out. And you really get to come through a lot of keys and a lot of different sounds if you check out that song. The first standard that I ever learned by ear is a standard that nobody knows and almost nobody plays. So I almost never get to play it. But that's a song called I Heard You Cried Last Night. And uh, I learned that off uh, an album of the late but great Vic Juris. Another song that I really enjoy playing, which is also, again, kind of complicated to play, is The Old Milestones. And if you want to hear a great version of that song, then you should check out the Joe Henderson album, So Near So Far, which has pretty much my favorite Schofield solo ever. And finally, a song that I also really love playing that almost nobody knows is called Ugly Beauty, which is a tune by Thelonious Monk. It's, if not his only, then at least one of his only three-quarter tunes. Again, it has a few sort of twists and turns because it's a monk tune, so it has twists and turns, but it's de definitely a very beautiful song to check out. If you're going to start expanding your repertoire, which I definitely think you should, I'm always trying to learn new songs, then you wanna also have some exercises and some ways to practice all these tunes. And I have a few videos where I'm talking about how you learn standards and some good exercises to check out on tunes to help you learn them and to become more free when you're improvising them. And I'm linking to those in this playlist.